happiness is beautiful It's a kind of reality Happiness is the highest good Happiness is free So let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy Welcome to the Happiness Show. This is George Ortega, and I'm here to talk about happiness, because happiness is, always has been, and always will be, the point of it all. Tonight's topic is going to be happiness in the perfect world movie. But uh, before we get into that, I, I have a special announcement. Um, as, of, um, as of today, the Ethical Culture Society of Westchester will be sponsoring the Happiness Show. So I just want to give you um, a little information about them. Um, they're a religious and educational fellowship that's devoted to basically promoting ethical living. Um, you know, the congregation there, they're, they're located right here in White Plains on Saxonwood Road, and uh, the congregation there is very warm and friendly and very committed to improving the world. Um, I actually became a member several weeks ago, and um, the ethical culture, is, it's a humanist religion, and it was established in 1876 by Felix Adler. Um, okay, so our, our Westchester Ethical Culture Society is going to per be periodically um, producing some of these shows. Um, they'll be producing the show next week, and that'll be hosted by the leader of the congregation, Bart Warden. Okay, so I hope you'll tune in for this very special show next week. Okay, so um, basically this show is um, you know, let, let's start off with the idea that, you know, our feelings and behaviors are really greatly influenced by our, inf our experience. Um, you know, the environment will, will generally mold a lot of times how we, how we feel and how we think. And what happens is the media is a very, very um, great part of that environment. We're, we're greatly influenced by the media. Now, um, a lot of times the media will mirror us, will we'll mirror us as people, as a society, as individuals, they'll try to portray us as we are, but um, at other times the media will influence us to, um, to be in certain ways. Um, for example, the media can rally us to war, like it did recently with, with Iraq, or it can rally us to help famine victims, like it did um, years ago with Afghanistan. And or it could, you know, just uh, rally us through commercials to uh, to go see a, uh, a movie. Um, it can also, you know, it can do very important things. Actually, it can it can uh, make us more socially tolerant of each other. Um, on the other hand, it can make us more violent. Um, many studies have indicated that um, when children watch uh, violent images on TV through cartoons, um, they become more violent. So um, so basically. Now, our, these movies have a tradition that sometimes, like, uh, accentuates the uh, the worst that could happen. I mean, <laughs> these are like these are like the catastrophe movies, and and apparently we we tend to love them because they they do very well. Um, examples of s these kinds of movies are like Airplane, The Towering Infer Inferno, The Titanic, Earthquake, Godzilla, and Jaws. Um, now, these movies tend to influence us to fear our our world. You know, we see them. I, I know, like, after I saw Jaws, I was afraid to go in the water. And um, I'm not sure how others of our, us are affected, but they tend to just incite fear. And, um, and then a lot of these movies tend to, um, to um, influence us to feel a lot of pain. You know, we, we empathize for the people, the characters in the, uh, the movies, even though we, we know it's not real. And we really, you know, feel a lot of, you know, caring, but a lot of, like, you know, pain with them. We, we, um, we experience that. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of these movies can, they might be an influence in the, the high levels of anxiety that we experience as a society. Um, as I'd mentioned in previous shows, um, psychologist Martin Seligman, who's like of the top 100 psychologists of all time, he's like number 31. So he's uh, he's a major authority in the field. He um he mentions in a book that you know at any one time um, about 25 percent of us are actually depressed, and um, a very important component of depression generally is anxiety. So so I think a lot of times these movies 
do tend to uh, to influence us in in ways that that might actually be contributing to this anxiety in, in society. Um, some movies, although they're well, they're relatively few, um, try to present purely pleasant experiences. Um, you know, like going to a concert, a really good concert, um, and you're just really hearing like very positive music that just makes you feel good. Um, and so, like, you know, when when trying to understand um, why a lot of movies are kind of like filled with um, the the negativity, the fear, and, and and all that, um, one one explanation might be that um, there's a theory of of fiction. Um, um, that, that basically, for a story to be told, it has to have conflict. Now, conflict in, in this sense me means that um, usually means that um, a problem has to be overcome. But often um, in stories, it, it tends to be reflected by conflict between people, and you know, just a lot of negativity in that way. Okay, and you know, fortunately, some do. A lot of movies, I think, try to present happily ever after endings. You know, where where there is a problem that's presented and it's solved eventually, and you know, we feel good at the end. We feel that the, the movies ended in a very good way. Okay, so um, this show is is going to be devoted to presenting the rationale for a new uh, genre of movie, a new kind of movie, and. Basically, it would be like the exact opposite of the kinds of catastrophe horror movies that I um, mentioned before. Um, they would be, um, a movie like this would be designed to influence us to embrace life, you know, not to dread it or to fear it or to, to find great um, displeasure in it. And so it would be like about a, a perfect world. It, it would be a movie depicting a per perfect world. Um, it would be um, absolutely pleasant, um, trouble-free. Um, it would be a utopia, a paradise on Earth. Um, now, admittedly, it, it would be very unrealistic, because that's not the world we live in. But on the other hand, you know, we, we see and tend to enjoy movies of like giant insects uh, invading the planet and um, wreaking havoc on us. So, you know, so, um, you know it is unrealistic, but we're, we're accustomed to that. Okay, and um, hopefully the movie would serve as a role model toward um, toward us um, becoming happier, toward um, toward really just um, influencing us to see how a world could really be. Um, a lot of times, the way um, the way we learn is by um, by seeing the environment, by by modeling after individuals, and, and a lot of times we model after you know television or um, movies and so hopefully you know a movie like this could inspire us to really um, work on improving both ourselves and our, our world to make it seem much more like the kind of movie that um, that would be um, you know about a perfect world um, it would really present a totally vicarious pleasant experience and hopefully it would be enjoyed by many for that as many of us enjoy um, concerts that are they're very positive um, let's see. Okay, and I think you know, it, you know. Hopefully, it would demonstrate um, that that um, audiences could sit through an hour and a half movie that's totally pleasant and really enjoy it. You know, it would be kind of like attending a wedding where where everything goes well. Okay. Um, now I want to go into um, what this kind of movie would be like in a bit more detail, but. Um, but before that, I want to do a song that I wrote, and it kind of reflects the idea of, um, well, it's basically about appreciating our, our planet as it is, our world as it is. So, all right, this song is called Wonderful Planet.
there was before since how could there have been a world without it all having been made by someone or something Okay. Um, so yeah, let's let's um, let's explore a bit more of uh, what a, a perfect world movie um, would be like. Um, I don't think it, w it would need to present any specific ideology. I don't think like it would need to promote any specific um, you know social or political system, um, economic system, or anything like that. You know, I think um, basically it would um, want to depict everyone, every one of us, enjoying every moment of our lives, um, whether we're working or with friends or whatever we're doing, you know, we would be really enjoying it. Um, we'd be going about our daily routine, our daily activities, just filled with pleasure. Um, and, you know, that would be manifest in, in our expressions, smiling a lot and um, just talking very pleasantly with uh, the different people with whom we interact. Um, let's see. It should, it really should include everyone, I think. You know, it shouldn't be limited to, let's say, people here in the United States or um, a certain part of the world. I think it, you know, it should really embrace the, the whole planet, um, all, all parts of society and all parts of the world. And, um, you know, again, it, it, could, um, it could be made in either a, a realistic or non-realistic manner. Um, what I mean by that is, like, it could be, like, there could be a, a beginning to a movie like that where you see people actually working to make that world um, as it, you know, um, came to appear, came to be, um, in a realistic way, perhaps through politics, education, um, the media, you know, different, different ways that we're familiar with. Or, you know, it could be somewhat unrealistic, um, you know, like through a pharmaceutical uh, solution or something. You know, it could be kind of like science fiction. Um, okay, and the idea would be that, um, that you know, um, the individual happiness would, would be greatly expressed in, in these kinds of movies, in, you know, this kind of a movie. And, and like, you know, such, such a movie would hopefully, um, hopefully inspire us to, um, to be happy because, you know, when, when we, again, when we see um, images of people on, on, in movies or on TV or in our life, we a lot of times tend to emulate them, you know. We, they serve as examples for how we can be or sometimes how we should be. So I think, you know, this kind of a movie would really influence us to, to really enjoy ourselves, um, you know, much, um, very, very much. Okay, um, here's some more examples of, like, what um, a perfect world movie could present. Um, there, there, of course, would be no wars, you know, no threat of wars. You know, it would be a very peaceful planet, you know. Probably, we, I don't think, we, we wouldn't have to have militaries, you know, that would be great. Uh, there would be ref, um, racial and ethnic harmony, you know, there would be interracial marriages, um, just everybody, you know, from all um, parts of life, from all parts of society, all parts of the world, really getting along. Um, there would be no personal conflict. Um, I used to like watching soaps. Um, I used to like the, the acting in them. Um, but I, I had to stop because, I mean, like, um, they would just present so much conflict. I mean, it seems like the characters are often just really at each other all the time. But, you know, in a movie like this, um, they would, you know, all the interactions would, uh, would be really pleasant. Um, it'd be, um, you know, so it would be very pleasant to watch. 
And um, again, there, you know, there, um, it could be kind of like science fiction-y, um, like presenting maybe that there's no illness and no accidents, you know, it could be kind of like a utopian paradise, or it could be more realistic, you know, um, just having everybody in, in very good health. And, uh, you know, the idea is that, you know, everywhere, everywhere the people went, whether they're working wherever they were with, with, with whomever they were with, they'd be really enjoying life. They would be really expressing happiness. Okay, everyone would uh, really be completely happy. Okay, um, there are, you know, some people would say, well, you know, this, um, a movie like this would never work. You know, it's just people wouldn't enjoy it, just, you know, it just wouldn't um, fly with a lot of people. But um, I've got, you know, I want to just present a few kinds of points that, that might address some of these kinds of concerns. Like in r today, in reality, in our world today, there are occasions that are very pleasant, that are, you know, sometimes filled with pleasure. Like, for example, weddings. A lot of times, you know, when a wedding and a reception goes as planned, goes very well, I mean, it's, it's totally pleasant. You know, it's, um, it's the service and then the, the meal and the dancing and the celebrating. And again, a lot of times, like in concerts and, um, you know, different kinds of concerts, whether it's rock or rap or classical, I mean, um, a lot of the songs are very inspiring and, they, you know, people really, really um, enjoy um, the hour and a half, two hour concerts that, uh, that we attend. And uh, then there's another point. Um, many of us already believe that a world like this um, is destined. And what I'm referring to is like, we have a belief in heaven, you know, that we, um, most of us believe that, you know, when we die, um, we'll go to heaven and, and this, this place will be um, absolutely blissful. You know, it would be a total paradise, um, total pleasure, no, no pain, no kind of um, conflict or, or um, adversity. And so, um, so we really do have in our culture a tradition of believing that a world like this is possible and, you know, it's part of our religious tradition. And I think the, the last argument um, for having a movie like this is that, um, you know, I think, I think it would be very well worth the try. You know, it's something that we would um, really um, benefit from, from seeing if it works, from seeing if people really would enjoy a movie like this and, um, and seeing if, if such a movie would influence us to, um, to change ourselves and to change our world, to, to make it um, much more wonderful so that we could, of course, be uh, much happier. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, I just want to just talk a bit about, you know, our, our present world, you know, to, to kind of like um, serve as a, a contrast. You know, a lot of times we, you know, in the media, we're obsessed with a lot of violence and a lot of fear and a lot of pain. A lot of what the images we watch on TV and in movies are, are filled with that. And um, we, uh, you know, we, we tend to enjoy that to a, to a certain extent. Um, we get, um, you know, we enjoy uh, a lot of the violence and uh, apparently we enjoy, uh, you know, a lot of the fear and, and feeling a lot of the pain for the characters there. Um, and, you know, like our country, you know, we, I, you know I, I believe we have the greatest country in the world, but, you know, I think um, we also have the most violent country in the world. Um, you know, our, our crime rate, our violent crime rate, etc. And it's probably the most violent um, country in terms of what our media presents. Um, so we've, we've basically developed to a great extent a, a masochistic and sadistic um, route to pleasure. In other words, um, we, will, um, we will a lot of times like a movie will present someone as having done something wrong, so it'll kind of invite us to feel some kind of righteous retribution and enjoying when, um, when the villain or villains, um, you know, are punished in some way, and we'll enjoy that. And a lot of times, these movies will cause us to feel a lot of pain for the victims, for, um, for good people that, um, that very bad things happen to. Okay, so... Um, so basically, uh, um, a movie that would depict a perfect world um, could help us to just um, overcome these more primitive um, ways of seeking pleasure and really just um, um, inspire us to, to seek um, pleasure, to enjoy movies um, that, that really show people really um, getting along and enjoying life more. Um, 
Okay, uh, let's see. So then um, a question would be, you know, how can we get a movie like this made? <laughs> um, I think, you know, basically it would have to be um, word of mouth, you know, people talking about it, um, writing about it. Um, it hasn't been done before, you know. Um, it's um, sometimes you just need some kind of a pioneer movie maker um, to really um, break ground in something like this. Um, there have been certain um, novels and um, movies in the past that have attempted to present a utopia, but unfortunately a lot of these have actually been failed utopias or there have been demonstrations of um, perfect worlds that, that didn't work in one way or another. But, um, but I think, yeah, I think the, the right individual with a very creative, uh, progressive mind could, um, could create a movie like this that, um, you know, I would, I would hope um, many of us would enjoy and, and greatly benefit from. Okay, so, and I, of course, um, yeah, I guess, you know, if, if, if anyone in the audience knows somebody in the movie business, um, you know, and they could uh, communicate the, uh, the idea. Again, a lot, a lot of times how things happen are, are is simple word of mouth, just, you know, just suggesting something to someone, and, um, and hopefully it'll come about. All right, so um, we've got s um, some time left, so what I want to do is go into our strategies and considerations segment, and I want to um, go into some, you know, specific advice on how we can um, become much happier. Okay, the, um, one thing we should be doing is focusing on the feeling of happiness. Happiness is a feeling just like anger or sadness. Um, it's, it's something that, um, that when we focus on it, when we try to feel it, we can actually feel it more strongly. And, and so the idea is, yeah, um, for example, um, if one is an actor and one's role calls upon him to play a very angry person, well, the person's probably going to have to rehearse, you know, re rehearse the, the feeling, the emotion, the, um, the expression, the behavior. And, um, and that's, the, that's the same thing that, that we should be doing for happiness. We should really, um, you know, take time out during our day when, when we have leisure, when we have free time, to just, um, to just practice feeling happier, to just um, pretend we're actors. Um, there's a philosophy. Um, in psychology and in acting, I think, um, that refers to acting as if. That, in other words, it's been definitely, this is very scientific actually, uh, if, um, if we act in a certain way, we will end up feeling more that way. For example, if we smile, um, most of us or many of us will end up feeling um, much happier as a result. So, um, so focusing on happiness, I think, um, is a really um, good exercise to help, help us get in touch with that feeling so that like when we're engaged in, in other activities with friends or working, we can remember how, what it felt like. We could remember, um, you know, our practice and then, you know, feel that feeling um, regardless of what we're doing. Okay, um, something else we should try is um, meditation. Um, there are two um, very popular types of meditation now. One was introduced in the, um, I think, 60s. It, it's called Transcendental Meditation. And it was um, basically introduced in a kind of like religious um, forum by Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. But then um, a psychologist, Herbert Benson, decided to uh, experiment with it to see if it was effective. And um, see, with, with the transcendental meditation, that would give you a certain mantra, a Sanskrit word, and you would um, repeat it, and it would have um, very influential, beneficial effects on the body. But Dr. Benson pretty much demonstrated that just saying the word one would create the same results. So um, with TM, um, there have been like over 500 um, studies conducted by major universities um, in the United States and throughout the world that demonstrates that it's not just effective in, in helping one become happier, but in, in helping um, physiologically lowers blood pressure. I mean, in, in like, in, um, in the 20 minutes that one would meditate twice a day, one reaches a, a level of relaxation that's much deeper than the relaxation we reach um, during sleeping. And um, there's another meditation that's, that's out now that's more popular. Um, a psychologist, John Kabat-Zinn, has been using it to train people who 
suffer from chronic pain to be able to overcome that pain and that's called mindfulness meditation and the idea behind that is simply to experience our, our feelings and thoughts and our environment our whole being non-judgmentally to kind of just observe our reality rather than judging it and evaluating it um, and that has been demonstrated to be incredibly effective um, there's a there's a, an article that I'm looking forward to reading soon that's going to be coming out in a, a magazine called Psychosomatic Medicine that demonstrates that um, subjects who, um, who practice this kind of meditation um, increase their immune activity and more importantly they increase the activity in their left frontal lobe which is um, greatly uh, um, influences pleasure. So and it, yeah I think you know meditation I think would be a very good um, thing to look into as a way of, han of enhancing uh, one's level of happiness. Okay, well that's all we have time for tonight. Thanks for watching. In the future we'll explore other topics designed to help us better enjoy life. This is George Ortega saying, be good, think well, feel very happy, and I hope you'll join me again next week here on The Happiness Show. Happiness is powerful It's our underlying need Happiness is why we live each day Happiness is destiny, so let's be so very happy. Yeah, let's be so very happy. Yeah, let's be so very happy.